good morning to all of you so yesterday we were discussing about various application domains of ai we discussed about marketing banking finance agriculture healthcare gaming space exploration and we were discussing about autonomous vehicles so uh, you might have heard about tesla's autonomous car which can drive themselves so when this is needed when there are some elderly people who cannot drive but uh, who want to commute uh, from one place to another place at that time uh, this uh, driverless car is really useful sometimes there are remote locations where the service providers like ola and uber they cannot provide the service and if uh, someone has to travel but uh, doesn't know the driving so a driverless car is really useful in that situation so uh, this driverless car typically takes the inputs uh, from different sensors so which are the sensors like the cameras that are attached like uh, front camera back camera uh, side cameras then radars so the radars are used to sense that if some vehicle or some person or some object is approaching towards the uh, autonomous vehicle or not and using all this information the navigation decisions are taken whether to move forward or slow down or uh, apply the brake change the gear like that so uh, uh, companies like vimo conducted several test drives in phoenix before deploying their first ai based public ride hailing service the ai system collects data from the vehicles radar cameras gps so gps is also important this is a global positioning system and cloud services to produce control signals that operate the vehicle remember that all the uh, navigation is taken care by this system so it has to generate the control signals okay advanced deep learning algorithms can accurately predict what objects in the vehicle's vicinity are likely to do this makes vimo cars more effective and safer so deep learning uh, it is mostly focused towards uh, uh, object detection so like when the car uh, navigates through road so what what are the typical objects like road is there then buildings are there and then trees are there other vehicles are there then pedestrian uh, may be there and so on so these are typical objects so if system can detect can localize these objects another thing is can it predict the speed of other vehicle whether it is approaching toward the autonomous vehicle or not if this prediction is made then the life becomes more easier for the system to to make the decision like if, if we are driving and from the opposite direction someone is making the overtake and if we don't slow down if we cannot judge that whether that vehicle is uh, uh, overtaking another vehicle uh, in the opposite direction if i don't slow down if i don't control my vehicle well then that there is probability that uh, that vehicle may hit my vehicle this may happen if i don't control my vehicle well so i have to predict whether that vehicle is approaching to autonomous uh, vehicle or not so uh, this prediction is important and deep learning techniques are useful over there another famous example of autonomous vehicle is tesla's self driving car ai implements computer vision image detection and deep learning to build cars that can automatically detect objects and drive around without human intervention elon musk talks a ton about how ai is implemented in tesla self driving cars and autopilot features before that tesla will have fully self driving robo taxi version one that can ferry 
if we are ready for the sprints. The next domain is chatbot. So uh, it is not only so chatbots uh, can be seen every. We can use the chatbot. Use Amazon Alexa uh, or uh, Amazon Echo Echo dot in pair. So uh, and these are the assistants that have become very uh, common technologies, and common man is also using these technologies. Few examples include Siri, Cortana, which are gaining popularity because of the user experience they provide, like user friendliness they provide. They can understand. Uh, various words uh, they can understand uh, the queries that are asked that's why they are popular amazon's eco is an example of how artificial intelligence can be used to translate human language into desirable actions so what are the actions we can, we may say uh, alexa uh, play the song alexa uh, turn off the fan like that so based on your voice commands the actions are done uh, so uh, this is really powerful. This device uses speech recognition and natural language processing to perform a wide range of tasks on your command. It can do more than just play your favorite songs. It can be used to control the devices at your house, book caps, make phone calls, order your favorite food, check the weather conditions and so on. Another example of the newly released Google's virtual assistant called Google Duplex that has astonished millions of people. Uh, not only uh, can it respond to calls and book appointments for you, but it also adds a human touch, like uh, how the personal assistant will take care. Like, uh, sir, you have this appointment uh, today. Uh, uh, then you may tell that oh i want to postpone that appointment to afternoon so that is also possible like uh, how human being takes care of the uh, uh, some some like some pa is there and some uh, uh, busy uh, professional is there so how pa uh, takes care of the meetings uh, that are scheduled and phone calls that are to be made so the same kind of uh, uh, professionalness uh, can be shown by these chatbots. Uh, the device uses natural language processing and machine learning algorithms to process human language and perform tasks such as manage your schedule, control your smart home, make a reservation and so on. OK. So uh, what are the technologies behind this natural language processing? So what are language we speak? We, we may speak English or we may speak a regional language. Uh, then the chatbot should be able to understand what we want to say. Uh, so uh, whenever we say something, uh, it is recorded as a speech signal. So speech signal is a variation of uh, amplitude against time. And uh, from that speech, the system should be able to uh, make that uh, what the user want to say. Like there are many ways of asking the same question and uh, there are many synonyms. So the system should be able to understand. And once it understands, then uh, in the background, uh, uh, there may be a data set of uh, huge uh, uh, words, huge number of words, and uh, exactly the queries are to be formed, and the information is to be retrieved from the database, or the action is to be taken based on the query. So, first problem is uh, speech to text, and next problem is text to action. Okay. Next is social media. So ever since social media has become our identity, we have been generating an immeasurable amount of data through charts, tweets, posts, and so on. So every day we generate a lot of data, we post a lot of data. 
and wherever there is an abundance of data ai and machine learning are always involved there are examples like on a facebook if you upload your photo then it may localize that in that image where your face is it may put a rectangle around your face have you observed this thing so how how this happens because for computer when we upload some image it is just set of numbers nothing else it is a matrix so in that matrix where the human being is there human being is present it is difficult to localize but ai helps over here deep learning helps over here we are also going to implement the same thing in real time in a video we are going to implement how to localize uh, the face of the person then you might have observed that it asks you to tag your friends and it may give you some suggestions by recognizing those people in the image so how this happens there are some facial features and deep learning will extract those features but it is really complex because there are um, millions of people or facebook and how it uh, recognizes uh, those persons is uh, deep learning is a technology behind that which is a part of machine learning so in social media platforms like facebook ai is used for face verification wherein machine learning and deep learning concepts are used to detect facial features and tag your friends deep learning is used to extract every minute detail from an image by using a bunch of deep, deep neural networks on the other hand machine learning algorithms are used to design your feed based on your interests okay so which posts you are going to see so that feed is determined using uh, machine learning like uh, in recommendation system which apps are to be populated in google play or in youtube which videos are to be populated which videos are to be suggested to the user so this is uh, done by machine learning and uh, deep learning but mostly machine learning based algorithms okay so uh, here also in facebook which posts you are going to see that is determined by them next is another example uh, is twitter's ai which is being used to identify hate speech and terroristic language in tweets so uh, there are billions of people who are making tweet every day sometimes people they use the negative language or hate language and if someone is typing uh, in such hate language if it gets spread so this is not good so that's why there are algorithms to determine the hate speech negative speech and uh, they may collapse the tweet uh, or collapse that particular post they may take a decision to suspend the account or they may take a decision to uh, to warn the user there are so many actions they take so the technology behind this is machine learning and deep learning where uh, there is a database of uh, negative words uh, and uh, based on uh, those words uh, the decision is taken whether certain post is uh, negative or positive or neutral like that okay so a company discovered and banned uh, 3 lakh terrorist link accounts 95% of which were found by non human artificially intelligent machines then next is artificial creativity this is very very powerful application like there is a musician and that musician lived for say 80 years out of that he was active for say 60 years from age of 20 he started making 
music uh, albums now in this 60 years he or she produced many albums say 200 albums people they like the music of that particular musician after the musician dies if you want to generate new music based on his or her style but different lyrics different uh, composition is it possible answer is yes with the help of uh, deep learning based uh, artificial creativity you can generate the music just like the musician used to generate so have you ever wondered what would happen if an artificially intelligent machine tried to create music and art? An AI system called MuseNet can now compose classical music that echoes the classical legion Bach and Mozart. So this Bach and Mozart, they are very, very popular musicians. MuseNet is a deep neural network that is capable of generating four minute musical compositions with 10 different instruments and can combine styles from country to Mozart to Beatles. MuseNet was not explicitly programmed with an uh, understanding of music, but instead discovered patterns of harmony, rhythm and style by learning on its own. Like, just like uh, some person who studied each and every song of that musician and uh, now capable of generating new songs based on that style. He copies the style of that particular musician. So uh, how the brain or how the neural network of that person will behave, the same concept is applied over here to generate a new music. Another creative product of AI is content automation tool called Wordsmith. Wordsmith is a natural language generation platform that can transform your data into insightful narratives. So it will narrate, it will write essays uh, for certain data. Take giants such as Yahoo, Microsoft, Adu are using Wordsmith to generate around 1.5 billion pieces of content every year. So this is another application of AI in uh, corporate domain. Then uh, what is AI? We have seen the applications of AI, but what is AI? Some introduction we had in the beginning. So this is the definition. AI is a way to make machines think and behave intelligently, just like human beings. These machines are controlled by software inside them so AI has a lot to do with intelligent software programs that control these machines. So we are going to write uh, some codes uh, where uh, we will construct the AI based programs. We will use Python programming language for the same. It is a science of finding theories and methodologies that can help machines understand the world and accordingly react to situations in the same way that humans do. So basic thing is to mimic the human being. Basically, we mimic the human way of thinking, human way of reasoning, human behaviors uh, using computers. Earlier this was not there. Earlier the microprocessor was there. It was invented uh, way back. Uh, uh, but the microprocessor and the basic processor, they didn't have the capability of thinking like human beings. They are good calculators. Given the data, they can process it. But they cannot think on themselves. Like if we give input and output, they cannot determine the algorithm. We have to give input and algorithm, they will give us the output. Okay, so this is the basic difference between 
conventional computing and AI based computing. AI based computing is mostly observation based uh, where we may provide a set of inputs and set of corresponding labels. So that is output. And the neural network will learn the weights of uh, each neuron, uh, weights associated with neurons. And uh, for unknown sample, it will determine the label for that particular sample. If you look closely at how the field of AI has emerged over the last couple of decades, you will see that different researchers tend to focus on different concepts to determine many different forms. We want machines to sense, reason, think and act. We want our machines to be rational too. Rational means what? Like doing the best in certain situation. Uh, taking the rational decisions that is important for the AI based agents. AI is closely related to the study of the human brain. Researchers believe that AI can be accomplished by understanding how the human brain works, by mimicking the way the human brain learns, thinks and takes action, we can build a machine that can do the same. But yet, it is not possible to exactly copy the human brain because in human brain, there are many electrochemical processes, biological processes, and how exactly it works till it is a mystery. Scientists, they cannot totally understand how human brain works. Although many explorations of human brain are done, it is understood that there are neurons in human brain and they are connected to each other. Uh, there are so many neurons, there are pathways, but still biological human brain cannot be constructed by scientists. We are engineers, so we cannot, we can, but typically we cannot uh, have the electrochemical processes, biological processes uh, when we work with computer. So what we do is we see what happens in biology. What are our tools? As an engineer, which tools we have? We have mathematics. We have statistics with us. So we use mathematics and statistics to write a code that may behave in the same way as human brain does. We don't know the electrochemical processes, but we try to mimic, we try to copy uh, the behavior. We don't know the underlying processes. So we process, we, we try to mimic with the help of mathematics. So this can be used as a platform to develop intelligent systems that are capable of learning. Then uh, this is biological uh, brain processes. So complexities are increasing. Brainstream, midbrain, limbic, and neocortex. So uh, in neocortex, abstract thoughts they come in limbic behavior is uh, their behavior control is taken care of and emotions. Then in midbrain, motor regulation and appetite. Brainstem, it take care of heart rate, body temperature. So our uh, brain continuously senses uh, the environment around us. And these are the part of human brain. And these are the uh, responsibilities of these parts. And this is how raw data gets converted through various levels of processing. So data, if some uh, data is there, raw data is there. Uh, say uh, we, we look at some scene, we look at some uh, natural scenery where mountains there 
and uh, so this is the data. We have some information. Or we apply our uh, uh, thinking to get the knowledge out of it, like the knowledge. And there is a shift in it, so we apply our knowledge that we understand. And uh, we may take some actions based on that. Like if you want to travel in that ship, then you may stop the ship by giving some signal. So that is the intelligence we apply in parallels. So uh, the processes are processing, cognition, pattern extraction, and inference. So this is how uh, human brains or human uh, uh, beings uh, they do certain activities. One of the main reasons we want to study AI is to automate many things. We live in a world where we deal with huge and insurmountable amounts of data. The human brain cannot keep track of so much data. Now, nowadays what we have, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, uh, we have uh, so many apps around, uh, Twitter is also there. So what happens sometimes, uh, we may see some post yesterday and today we don't remember what was the exact content. After uh, content we may remember, but exact line by line we, not, we may not remember. Why? Because there is a lot of data around us and human brain cannot keep track of so much of data which is not exactly relevant to us. So the data comes, but that is not exactly useful to us. So we cannot keep track of all the data, but we may need something, some device that will analyze the data for us. Now this data originates from multiple sources simultaneously. Data is unorganized and chaotic. Knowledge derived from this data has to be updated constantly because the data itself keeps changing. The sensing and actuation has to happen in real time with high precision. So we may need some device that will analyze so much of data coming from various apps or uh, so much of data that coming that is coming from multiple sources simultaneously. So uh, this is the reason uh, why AI is progressing and nowadays they are applying AI in many fields. So the future of this particular uh, domain or this particular branch is really good. Uh, and uh, I speculate that there will be many, many jobs uh, in this particular domain for next 20 to 30 years. Because everyone is generating data, starting from common man, uh, corporate uh, houses, and uh, municipalities, and uh, every domain it is generating the data. And there is a need, and there will be need to analyze that data because data is there; it is there in its raw form. So raw data is not useful. Unless we apply some intelligence, unless we draw some insights from it, unless we come to some intelligent conclusion out of that data, the data is useless. It is just a data. It occupies some space in hard disk. That's all. But the intelligent decisions, they are taken using machine learning based algorithms uh, and uh, sometimes uh, the the deep learning also helps but machine learning is more versatile more number of algorithms are there deep learning is a part of machine learning deep learning is a part of machine learning and it has got a specific applications like uh, for images and videos and speech it is good but if the data is tabular, if the data is structured, then we have to go for machine learning. So in wide sense, machine learning is popular than deep learning. 
okay even though uh, human brain is get great at uh, analyzing things around us it cannot keep up with the preceding conditions hence we need to design and develop intelligent machines that can do this we need ai systems that can handle large amounts of data in an efficient way with the advent of cloud computing we are now able to store huge amounts of data ingest data simultaneously from multiple sources without any lag index and organize data in a way that allows us to derive insights learn from new data and update constantly using the right learning algorithms think and respond to situations based on the conditions in real time so uh, these are the needs of ai systems uh, we need ai system to do all these things ai techniques are actively being used to make existing machines smarter so that they can execute faster and more efficiently then uh, when when we say uh, some machine is there so it has a database and train a database is there which contains the training data and once the training algorithm is executed uh, we have the uh, knowledge base and inference engine so uh, when user asks something that comes from input channel to this block which already has the knowledge base and inference engine so that input is compared against the knowledge base and inference engine will give us the decision that what is to be done and the expertise is returned to the user okay the decision is returned to the user like some stock is there whether to sell that stock buy uh, more stock of that particular company or do nothing so this expertise advice uh, can be given by this system which is expert system so likewise uh, systems are there check time is there continue for uh, five to ten minutes and then in the lecture after that so we call ourselves homo sapiens so what is the meaning of homo sapiens man the wise so we are proud of our wisdom we are better than other animals in terms of taking decisions and intelligence because our intelligence is so important to us for thousands of years we have tried to understand how we think that is how a mere handful of matter that is brain can perceive understand predict and manipulate a world far larger and more complicated than itself see size wise we are not very big creatures and uh, power wise also we are not powerful than many of the animals there also with the help of brain we we rule the world so uh, how this happens how we think we have tried to understand the field of ai goes further still it attempts not just to understand but also to build intelligent entities so we want to mimic how we think now in this process many scientists they try to define what is ai so there are four major domains or four major uh, categories uh, in which these definitions are uh, subdivided one is thinking humanly so uh, the exciting new effort to make computers think uh, machines with minds in the full and literal sense this was given in 1985 uh, and uh, the automation of activities that we associate with human thinking activities such as decision making problem solving learning so this is a definition of ai which is uh, more inclined towards thinking humanly so it focuses on thinking of human beings another way thinking rationally a study of mental facility faculties through the use of computational models okay 
the study of computations that make it possible to perceive reason and act so there is something to perform best under a uh, given situation so this thinking rationally so this both thinking humanly and thinking rationally in thinking rationally uh, the word human being it is absent whereas uh, here human word is present in these uh, in this definition and uh, so uh, over here the focus is on thinking process and last two definition uh, acting humanly the art of creating machines that perform functions so here the performance is important uh, than only thinking so perform functions that require intelligence when performed by people the study of how to make computers do things at which at the moment people are better so again the performance of humans that is taken into consideration so uh, another definitions are computational intelligence is the study of the design of intelligent agents so agents they perform some actions ai is concerned with the intelligent behavior of artifacts so artifact means object or robot so this is uh, based on behavior or based on action so these are some uh, definitions of ai then this was the guy called alan turing in 1950 he designed one test till now scientists they cannot pass the test which is designed by him for uh, satisfactory performance of a machine he designed this test the computer has to or, or the system that is designed by scientist has to go through this test and if the test is satisfied then the machine is good this was proposed by alan turing it is called as turing test it was designed to provide a satisfactory operational definition of intelligence a computer passes the test if a human interrogator after posing some written questions cannot tell whether the written responses come from a person or from a computer one one of the aspect if written questions are given then the answers are given by human being or machine if the eyes are closed for the uh, person who is asking the questions and if the responses they come uh, and if the person uh, after opening the eyes reads the response whether it is given by human being or machine if it is not uh, decipherable then it is good machine this is one of the aspects but there are many aspects in it first he said that for now we know the programming uh, that programming a computer to pass a rigorously applied test provides plenty work, plenty to work on the computer would need to possess the following capabilities first is natural language processing to enable it to communicate successfully in english as well as a regional language second is knowledge representation to store what it knows or hears third automated reasoning to use the stored information to answer questions and to draw new conclusion so there is machine learning or, or inference related then machine learning to adapt new circumstances and to detect and extrapolate patterns so this is learning uh, for prediction then computer vision to perceive objects and robotics to manipulate objects and move about so uh, all these capabilities should be possessed by the computer as per tari and he says that the capability should be perfect just like human being should be perfect so till now the perfect system with all these capabilities is not invented some of them are there but all of them so that's why it is said plenty to work on so that's why this 
field has a lot of future. These six disciplines compose most of AI entering these are credit for designing a test that remains relevant 60 years later. Yet AI researchers have devoted little effort to passing the training test, believing that it is more important to study the underlying principles of intelligence than to duplicate an example. So uh, how we think, so that process is important. And uh, that's why they uh, went closer to the functioning of human brain and they came to understand that uh, there are neurons, neurons are connected, and there are pathways and there is a communication between these neurons. And when we learn something, the neuron, they update their weights and that's why uh, they try to mimic this with the help of mathematics. Okay. So uh, thinking humanly all these things, uh, all these definitions we are going to explore in the next lecture. As of now, uh, we will stop here for today. Any doubt, any query? Okay, uh, so I'll download that in this list and then you can talk about Thank you for attending the lecture. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.